Interesting. So obviously, you, you know, as far and and you've had such an influence on people who believe not only in, in their faith in the religion and being Jewish, have faith in you. Now, in two thousand and five, after twenty seven years of being the spiritual leader, the rabbi of Temple Beth El, you decided to retire. Why? Well, that actually was a decision made many years earlier. I, I said that I wanted to retire at age 65, um, and if I was uh, dumb enough that I would, uh, that I would be, it would be mandatory retirement at age 70. I worked into my, con I have a life contract with, with the synagogue. Uh, but before I go ahead with that, when you're talking about belief, let me jump back for a minute. Uh, one of our sons, actually it was the son Myra was talking about earlier, um, at his, at a final, final rehearsal for his bar mitzvah, about a week to right before his bar mitzvah, uh, he and I were uh, practicing and preparing in the synagogue, and uh, he just broke down in tears. As a dad, I, I, I can't go ahead with this. I can't celebrate my bar mitzvah. I looked at him and said, why? I mean, you're, you're well prepared and uh, couldn't see any, op uh, any, uh, any ob obstacle. He said, Dad, I don't believe in God. <gasps> so I said, great, tell the congregation. I, probably half of them don't believe too. Oh. So share it. He said, I guess. I said, yes. And uh, he did. And uh, it was a beautiful ceremony. So the idea of not believing in God uh, was uh, something that, I, that uh, the questioning of God is something that uh, was, was important even in our children's life. Um, but back to retirement, um, I, I wanted to be able to retire young enough that I had the energy to, uh, and, feel, and the health uh, to, to follow uh, other pursuits. Um, uh, I often kid me say this, but it was, it was true. When I graduated high school, uh, my, my dream was uh, to take, pack a suitcase and, and hitchhike my way across to Los, An San, Los Angeles and hang out in, the, in Hollywood and just do something. And uh, well, of course, when my mother, especially because when my mother got wind of that, uh, said, uh, no, you are you you do whatever you want, but you're going to get a degree first. So as I said, I went, went east and became a rabbi. And uh, now in retirement, I can, uh, I can follow my dream of, of photography and videography and, and filmmaking. And, and you're doing so much of that now, but there was this total change. So you retired in 2005 as a healthy person to pursue all of your interests. And then a year later, it was like uh, uh, an incredible experience. When you were skiing, um, and you found out, which we know about now, that um, you're so vital, but you have Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. So how did, did you, you know, how did that affect you? How did you find out what's your... Actually, we found out about the Parkinson's the year year of retirement. Um, that uh, is my my successor, who we're very close with. He he worked with me uh, when, he, when he was uh, for five years before, prior to kind of, uh, actually about more, almost ten years before he, uh, he came in to succeed me. So he saw me under uh, how I was before Parkinson's, uh, Parkinson's had greatly affected me. And uh, as, he, as he likes to describe it, it was like uh, there was the Merle that he knew and respected was there inside me, but it was like a veil had come over and I wasn't able to, I had a struggle to get that, that Merle out, which is still there. That struggle is still there. Um, it, it, it's been tough. Um, and it's a disease that never stops taking, uh, or as Michael Fox sometimes says, it never stops giving you new challenges. Um, but I, I, I have one advantage in, in dealing with this disease. Um, I have a lifelong dyslexia, severe dyslexia. And uh, in fact, I was told in seventh grade I'd, I'd be lucky if I graduated high school. Uh, and I just refused to accept, accept that as, 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 as a limit. And I guess that's my, my attitude to how I deal with Parkinson's. You know, it's so interesting because, and Myra, and, and you were part of this and you've seen the change in Rabbi Singer, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, dyslexia. As you mentioned, in the seventh grade, I mean, you said you had such a difficulty going through school. You knew you had to work so much harder than anybody else. Mm -hmm. 
um, your teachers didn't have faith in you, said, hey, you're never going to amount to anything. I mean, the, the fact that you were able to persevere, you've done videos, and I recommend anybody out there that has a computer to go on YouTube. You have some amazing videos, one from dyslexia to Parkinson's, where you talk about yes. how they related and how you overcame it. Then the most recent one is a video on your Parkinson's, how you decided, how not decided, how you really saw changes in your body. Um, I understand that this video is part of uh, a film festival, hopefully will win. Um, you have so many videos, I, I recommend everybody out there, go on YouTube, um, learn more, and we're gonna learn some more here today, but um, it, it's so fascinating that when you discovered you had Parkinson's, you retired, um, yet you're doing so much now. Tell me, in, in overcoming Parkinson's, and that's probably not the right word, but I understand you're taking ballet classes? Oh yeah, there's, there's, a, great, there's a great program called uh, Boca Raton the Ballet Theater for, for Parkinson's disease. And we actually go through all different movements uh, and exercises that uh, any ballet person, uh, ballerina, would, would go through. Uh, it's in, 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 the, in the class, there are people who are in wheelchair, people who are d disabled to a greater, greater degree than I am, uh, to people who are my level. Um, and we all are there to, to help and to move and to, to uh, flow with the music um, and exercise. Uh, there's one thing that, uh, that, that is known about Parkinson's is that the way that you can successfully deal with it is through exercise. Uh, Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't do it to the degree I should, then I, I get it from Myra. Uh, but, uh, but exercise is probably is the one thing that we need to do. Interesting, but in the ballet class, you don't need a tutu, so you're okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> but I understand the two of you talk about, you know, Myra's influence. You take Tai Chi together twice a week? Myra? Yes. Uh, it's a program yeah. that just ended, and hopefully we'll pick it up again soon. But again, it's, uh, it's exercise, it's movement, it's good for everybody, and helps us both with balance, and it's fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. But uh, about his retirement and the Parkinson's, part of the problem with Parkinson's is that it usually takes a year or two till you're diagnosed. In that time, weird things are happening and nobody understands them. And for us, we kind of thought it was the uh, retirement. Because that would certainly be enough to make anybody depressed or make anybody have a little difficulty with decisions maybe or whatever. All the funny things that were going on that turned out to be Parkinson's. But we thought uh, it was all about the retirement. And, oh, um, and it was a tough time. Mm -hmm. that, it was that, a tough time. That suddenly here you are, the spiritual leader, the rabbi, and all the influence on people. Right. That suddenly you're home, and he couldn't function oh. as well as he had. So what were the first symptoms? Why. I mean, how did you how did you be diagnosed when you say it takes a year? Sometimes it takes a long time. So what were these symptoms? How did you discover? What did your body tell you? Well, the first thing was actually my my internist uh, saw it before I did, and before I wanted even to know it. The the uh, called the Parkinsonian mask. Uh, your face is not as expressive as it used to be and or as it, as it sh should normally be and he he saw this and uh and I, I i and i was not interested in hearing about it because i said well, from what i understand that the cure is worse than the disease which was to totally wrong um and uh the what happened is my sense of uh, my voice became softer and i've always taken great pride in having a voice that i could handle any aud auditorium or any room um, and that suddenly was limited. Uh, my handwriting, which has never been great, uh, when I got to the point where I had trouble reading what I wrote, uh, I knew that there was, there was a serious problem here. Um, and, uh, and then, so we went to, finally found a uh, neurologist, uh, movement disorder expert to, to uh, diagnose this. And uh, here we are. Here we are. You know, you're living your life a different way now, but you're doing so many important things. I mean, I mentioned the videos. Mm -hmm. I think sharing your dyslexia and your Parkinson's and showing what a vital man you are is so important. But just one minute back to the dyslexia, because mm -hmm. here you were, you were told you wouldn't 
you know, graduate, maybe not even graduate high school, yeah. and went on to do all of the terrific things that you were doing. But is it true that, that Myra, that you discovered the dyslexia, that, that, that the rabbi really didn't know what the problem was? Yeah, it, uh, nobody understood much about dyslexia as he was growing up. But when we started dating, um, I was a psychiatric social worker in a very large department of psychiatry in Cincinnati. And when we would be with my friends, uh, they were mostly uh, social worker, psychiatrist, psychologist, and, and these were the kinds of things we were interested in. And um, we, we kind of uh, began to take a look at what he was experiencing and gave it a name because we understood that. We were working with people with dyslexia. And uh, he began to think, well, maybe that's what was wrong with him. And the more he thought about it and looked at it and later got some help with it, the better mm -hmm. he felt because he knew he wasn't dumb. Yeah, but it happened so yeah. much later. You got through high much school. Later. You're in the right. seminary. Right. You're doing all this stuff. You're overcoming it. You have no idea when you're looking at a piece of paper that it's jumbled up. Or mm -hmm. um, What are the signs of dyslexia? Well, the problem with dyslexia is that um, when I look at a written word, um, my eye will go to either the middle of if it's a, a multisyllabic word to the middle of the word, or go to the end and then go backwards. And I'm not, I'm not even aware of this going on. Uh, in the milliseconds that it takes place, you're, you already have absorbed the word and are moving on. I'm still in a moment of trying to put, try to place place the word, the pronunciation. Um, the, uh, uh, to identify that word. So it's, it's a process that is there and that uh, you, you can learn to compensate for it for today, but uh, it, it's, it's part of your life, but you, can't, you just have to, you have to acknowledge and live and adjust. Fortunately, I, I come from a family background where uh, um, s s failure is not acceptable. And, uh, when, and I remember very vividly uh, the teacher, seventh grade teacher, kept saying to me, you're, you're not going to graduate high school, where are you going to go? And I just kept saying, I'm going to college. She finally gave up and said, go talk to the guidance counselor. And that, uh, he said, that was a fascinating meeting because he said to me, he said, you're, Merle, you did not do well on this test. This, your teacher is absolutely right. The aptitude does, it does not show you to have aptitude, aptitude to go ahead in, a, in an academic environment. However, your kindergarten test showed extreme possibility and potential. You know, kindergarten is a pre-reading test, huh. but uh, they didn't even know. What, and he said, so the, the result was, he said, you know, you can have great goals and great, great purpose. You may not, you may, may, may or may not achieve it, but go for it. And I remember walking home that day, uh, and, as I, uh, and then saying to myself, well, Merle. You can hit your wagon to a star, and if you, can't, you don't catch a star, at least you're going to learn to fly. And damn it, I'm going to go for it. Huh. And, that's, uh, and that worked until actually my, uh, my first semester. I was a sophomore in college, and I transferred to the University of Cincinnati and was, going, was minoring in rabbinics because my Hebrew was z almost zero. Um, and I was minoring in rabbinics, living at the, in the dormitory of the Hebrew Union College and, and majoring in sociology at the University of Cincinnati. Um, we had to take French, and, and I had to take Hebrew. Fr French, I learned somehow or another, and I passed. Hebrew, Hebrew I failed cold. Huh. And I remember going to the, the provost, uh, uh, Rabbi Sam Samuel, bless his memory, and he said to me, he said, in a southern accent, he said, Merle, you just go home, and you study all summer long, and you come back, you pass the test, and you'll be fine. And that, that, that was the days when we used to take the train. So I went down to the train station the next day to, to go home to Minnesota. And we're going out on the platform. It was at uh, dawn, looking and have tears in my eyes, thinking to myself, "Oh man, I may never see this sight again." Um, and uh, I told myself a story of of, uh, uh, of the great rabbinic teacher, who was uh, a shepherd, and uh, he saw he he saw that uh, water at a stream waterfall was being hollowed, hollowing out a rock. He said, if water can hollow out a rock, water knowledge can enter my brain, he went on to be a great scholar. I said, damn it, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I just went back and studied. And I, I said, I don't care what I have to do, I'm going I'm to I'm gonna get this degree. Uh, I'm going to get this piece of paper. I, whatever I do with, with it, I, I don't know. But uh, in fact, the one time I thought I was just yeah. going to go into professional camping and, and run, run, own and run a camp, because I love, love camping. Um, but, uh, <coughs> 
uh, I said, I, I said, I don't care what, whatever, whatever it takes, I'm yeah. going to do it. Amazing, you know. And if anybody can, you can. I mean, I I know that that uh, in the video again, I recommend the video about discovering you had Parkinson's, and you mentioned you were on a ski um, slope and your legs just yeah. weren't doing what they wanted to do. And then I found out that you are going someplace with your children soon, and that you may take up skiing again with an instructor. <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah, to, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow I leave. <coughs> Me too, but I go, go uh, up to New York to go skiing with our younger son and our grandchildren, which is, uh, I, I'm, I'm nervous about it, but I'll give it a try and, and, uh, with, 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 with a little bit of help. Well, there's no question that you're going to conquer whatever you set out to do. You are both so amazing. Learning about you has actually enhanced my life in some ways. It's given me the inspiration for you to do what, what you do with the disability. Um, and Myra, for you to, to, to be together for the life you have together. Uh, you're both an inspiration and, and remarkable people. And, and uh, we could talk for hours. Mm -hmm. But now I know that you have family to go to. Um, and it has been such a pleasure having both of you here as uh, a guest and learning about not just Jewish history, but about the two of you. And I thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you for this opportunity. And thank you to Lynn University for giving us the opportunity to be here in the studio and to, to be able to share our story. I totally agree. And we all thank Lynn University. This is a wonderful mm -hmm. studio for being able to use the studio here and uh, for you to share the stories. So again, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that you have enjoyed getting to know Rabbi and Myra Singer and um, learn a little bit about the Jewish history and certainly a lot about them. So, good night. <laughs>